Now, we've seen a couple different storylines. You want to tell us what your inspiration was for this and how you did your research and why it was important. Well, to start off, we, you know, we're doing a show about uh, Secretary of State, and so we're obviously doing a political show that we chose to uh, totally keep uh, somewhat realistic, heightened reality, but, you know, rooted in reality. And, of course, when you're doing a television show, you want to raise the stakes of the drama that you're doing, and there are no higher stakes than, than the nuclear issues. Um, I think we've learned that tonight. <laughs> yes, I'm almost too frightened to have a conversation, you know. But, um, uh, but we did want to feel like that we, part of what we do on the show in general is to try to entertain people but give them a kind of civics lesson at the same time and maybe educate them on things they may not be as familiar with. Again, keep them rooted in reality, push them. Uh, is that one of our mics? Is that me? No. no. Oh, it might be. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> okay, so so anyway, uh, um, we did want to get into some um, interesting aspects of, of the nuclear issues um, that people might not know about, like the Render Safe program, and that was one of the, the stories that we wanted to develop. And I'll let David talk a little bit more about that because you were the one who brought it to us. So sure, um, yeah, ever since you know. I, just like Valerie remembers, I actually remember well when India's president or prime minister, whoever the leader, for political reasons, um, exploded a nuclear, uh, tested a bomb. It was to uh, stoke nationalism so he could win an election because he was down in the polls. Um, in, in my opinion, one of the, probably one of the top two or three stupidest moves in the history of mankind um, because, of course, uh, Pakistan had to respond in kind and thus adding two countries um, to um, the nuclear soup of the world. Um, but in, in the case of Pakistan, uh, again, as Valerie mentioned, an, an Islamic bomb, and I'm a little insecure talking about this in front of real experts, uh, but also a country um, that is relatively unstable, um, a country that, we, that the United States didn't trust. And I became fascinated with the idea, I think I learned about it around 2000, 2001, um, with the United States program uh, to wrap up uh, nuclear weapons, CIA agents, various undercover agents, the United States keeping track of, um, of Pakistan's nuclear weapons in case the regime fell uh, to wrap up the weapons. I've heard it called the Render Safe Program, as Barbara mentioned. Um, I thought that was fascinating. Um, and as it turned out on our show, um, in the pilot, Barbara, had, had, there was there's talk of a nuclear treaty with Iran, but uh, nuclear had been sort of in the fabric of the show from the beginning. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we got a lot of drama out of, uh, out of this idea. Of we had the Pakistani regime fall, and we got to talk about this secret program. That all, it's such a secret program that even the officials I've talked to about it, um, they, don't, they can't confirm anything. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, but, but also we understand that Russia might be involved, the Chinese might be involved. Um, so there's that. Um, another nuclear issue that Barbara mentioned, the civics lesson, uh, which we're all, we always, you know, one thing that makes um, uh, talking about international issues entertaining is also educating people learning something. Um, and it's the idea that, um, and it was even in the clip, that if a dirty bomb went off, it's more a weapon of mass disruption, um, as Keith Carradine said there, than mass destruction. There, there wouldn't be a lot of, um, there, wouldn't, there probably wouldn't be any more loss of life than with a conventional bomb, uh, but people would be really freaked out, <laughs> um, and it could cause chaos. So I really love the idea that we could get that into a show to educate the public, um, that actually, you know, it, it would scare a lot of people, but it might not, that, that's not, um, in the same, nearly in the same level of concern as an actual nuclear bomb, a dirty bomb. And we also managed to get in a nod to the atomic clock, which we yes, <laughs> yes, we felt was an important issue because we were surprised to to discover how many people did not know of its existence, which is why we had to do a little reel about it. Yeah, and it was it was a uh, it was handy to get in in an episode where we actually had nuclear tension between India and Pakistan. We were uh, able to get in a story about. Um, and we, you know, bent it to the will of our show, um, but about how it would look bad politically if um, the bullet of the atomic scientist, 
change their doomsday clock from four minutes to midnight to three minutes to midnight. Uh, so Elizabeth McCord, our Secretary of State, sets her team about maybe to just chat with them. Um, and comes out of the White House, maybe they won't do that. It'll make us look bad in an election year. Well, and now we're at, we're at three minutes, and it's going to change tomorrow morning. Um, OK, so what are there ethical things that you guys have to think about in terms of when you do these kinds of storylines. I know, for example, uh, we brought someone in from the Department of Defense to talk to you about a number of things. Um, and I think he was the one who, who said he couldn't confirm or deny. Right, and I was just about office. to say that. There were certain great. questions that you asked that he said, yeah, no, I'm not going to tell you that. You know? <laughs> You're going to have to make that up. But I said about 110 <laughs> bombs, and it was like, yeah, but no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but I mean, are there sort of ethical things that you have to think about? Does the network get involved and say, hey, we don't want you teaching people how to detonate a nuclear bomb in Washington, D.C.? Or, I mean, are there things that you guys think about in terms of those issues? Or does the network make you think about them? Or do you just have free reign? Well, there are certain issues. That are, there are standards and practices at the network about things that we can and can't show. And, and we sort of weigh them all as they come up. Um, we have a lot of... Um, we have a lot of range in terms of what we can talk about. Our own, my own ethical issue, and I think the staff shares it, is that again, we want to be truthful about depicting what the state of the world is, and in particular where the nuclear issues are concerned. Um, but we, we, we want to, while we're giving everyone a little bit of civics lesson and entertaining them, not to cross the line where people begin to think that it's not real, that it's fictional. And so I feel like we have an ethical obligation to, to root our show a bit in reality um, so that it, we can make people aware that what we are talking about is an actual threat and these are all actual realities and, that, and, um, and things that we have to be aware of, so. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to do anything on a television show that could actually lead to endangering. I suppose anybody. you can just go online and find out how to build a bomb, right? Yeah, there, well, there is that, that issue. I mean, we certainly don't <laughs> reveal anything on our show that people couldn't find if they were, um, uh, you know, really uh, uh, motivated. Um, but, uh, you know, again, I feel like what we can do is is um, educate people on the issues and, and, and the growing tensions and the potential for growing tensions um, between countries, what, what are conflicts that can escalate um, into these issues. Because we have a Secretary of State, we are a foreign policy show, so we don't really get into domestic policy issues very much, and, and, and we really are a show about countries getting along or not getting along, or what, how you can solve these tensions, and what happens when you don't. Um, and in our show, we, we are an aspirational show, so we try to get people to a place where these problems are solved and sort of show by example how these diplomatic issues can be shown, so. I hope you're on the air for another 10 years at least. Um, so, it, they, we've had an election, things have changed. Um, <laughs> I know you, you weren't aware. We were very busy. But do you, I mean, do you think that's gonna affect the direction your show takes? One thing I think is really interesting about Madam Secretary, like you said, is that it's one of the few shows, I mean, there's Homeland and a few others, but that deal with the international issue, you know, that's not just based in the U.S. with crime, drama, and all of that, that you do sort of have this international perspective, which I think is fabulous. But do you see things changing for to sort of reflect the political climate in the country if you want to keep it based in reality? Well, to, to address the first part of what you said, you know, um, Secretary uh, Madeleine Albright, who has met with us and talked to us, one of the things that she said was uh, that our show makes a foreign policy less foreign. And I do think that that's one of the great gifts of being able to do a foreign policy show. We get to go into all these cultures and expose people to them in a way um, while entertaining them. And, and it makes the world seem less foreign in a way. Um, and uh, so, that is one thing. And then to address the second part of the question, our show is a sort of an alternate reality, which is that we're, we, when I started it, I decided we were based about one election cycle and one year in the future so that we could have had all the presidents we've had, and now we have Dalton, our president. So now we are necessarily going into an alternate reality. So, you know, where this election hasn't happened More to us. One, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
And so, um, you know, we'll always be dealing in our own world and our own rules, but we do try to um, write about foreign policy issues from a little, little bit of a futuristic point of view. So if we have drastic foreign policy changes, we might have to figure out if that happened in our world or not. And that's the most pressing issue right now for us. Yeah, and the only thing I add is that, um, and Barbara did this in the pilot, um, that our, our reality on the show is probably always going to aspire to be a little more heightened um, than it, 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 we want to sort of a little, well, yeah, it looks a little. Um, you may but, have to reach really high. No, but, I mean, but Barbara wrote a pilot where the Secretary of the United States had been murdered. And, you know, the, obviously we've had President assassinated, but there was a, a, a plot, a conspiracy. It turned out it was an inside job. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen the first season, too bad. Um, it's great. Um, but, um, but so already Barbara was starting with a heightened reality. Uh, and so, you know, it, depending on what happens in the world, and this is, this is definite, but, you know, I think we might react by, you know, maybe upping the stakes on our show. I don't know. That's not, I mean, the, the world of our show, as Barbara said, is an alternate reality. It's another dimension. It doesn't have to respond. It's aspiration. Is, is, is Elizabeth going to run for president? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I always say I hope we are on long enough to have that problem, <laughs> so um, I, I don't think anything's out of the question. I think the show's going to evolve and go where it needs to go, so. Well, thank you both very much for being here. And I'm